Alright, um, I'm going to just make a short video uh, about my process with uh, converting to EU3. Um, that's not the right folder. Um, yeah, so basically uh, the uh, process behind this is you take the save file, like uh, the original I believe was this one, and then um, you run it into the Crusader Kings to Heir to the Throne program file. You just run the run the batch file. It asks you where everything is, and the it runs, and then uh, you know it just runs a command window, window and then uh, it comes up with something like this. Um, now this will appear if it uh, if it works or not. Uh, this one did not work. Um, I don't think I had the original one around. Uh, but as you can see, it creates a bunch of stuff, and right here it says dead title found for somebody, uh, and it won't let you convert with a kingdom under a king. Uh, I mean, a kingdom, a, a king as a vassal of a kingdom. And it basically tries to create everything who's independent as an independent country. Well, you can see here at the bottom, too many independent countries, too few available tags. And you can tell by looking at these numbers that there are about 50 too many. Well. To deal with that, uh, there are several ways of, of doing that. Uh, one of which is to use uh, Crusader Editor to make it so that you can uh, do that. Well, Crusader Editor is, I, I've played around with it before in the past. It's a piece of crap. Uh, it's good for reading characters. But it's not so good for making sweeping changes to the games, or not so sweeping changes to the game, actually. Um, it's very hard to get it to correctly switch provinces from one person to another, for example, uh, which is something I had to do a lot to get rid of a bunch of uh, vassals, or not vassals, but uh, people who were independent that were making the process not work. Um, so, yeah. Um, another thing you can do is you can just open up the save file. Now, these save files are huge honking things, and as you can see, it's written in, in written in numbers, um, and you can barely tell what's going on. Well, I like the, uh, it's, EU3 has a better save file, uh, configuration, but the, the Crusader Kings one just makes my head hurt, so. What I did was I used the command window. If you push, uh, push F12 in Crusader Kings, it brings up the command one menu. A lot of, uh, PC games have that. Um, and you can enter various debug codes and cheats and stuff. Well, if you enter the Byzantine cheat, it makes it so that your um, your uh, diplomacy will always work. Well, as we all we've seen from my from my LP, uh, diplomacy doesn't always work, and I believe the Byzantine cheat also works from the works on um, uh, intrigue as well. And, uh, yeah, I can't think of any instance of intrigue that I did during the game that didn't fail at least three times. Or at least two times. If you're not counting killing the, uh, the spy master, Which I found is the effective way of doing it. Anyway, you all know that. Or, if you didn't skip a bunch of files, you know, you'd know that. Or you'd know that because you know how Crusader can source. Anyway, I didn't do that. I did the, the thing. And it works pretty well. Uh, that's the reason I basically did it a year earlier. Uh, I, I stopped the game a year early so that I wouldn't have um, a year later. Well, uh, Crusader Kings actually s uh, stops in December of like 1453, but uh, EU3 begins in uh, 1399, October 14th, 1399, I believe. I don't, I'm not sure the significance of that date. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's when I'm I was trying to aim for. I actually got a bit over than that uh, because of the, the, pr the process. And there's no real reason. You can go as far as you want and it'll still convert to 1399. I just wanted it to feel more authentic. Uh, anyway, I did that and it worked fine. Um, and uh, then what I had to do was I had to go into a, a an EU3 scenario editor, which is a much better program than this piece of shit. Um, and work with some stuff to make it prettier and make it make more sense. Um, now, that's one thing you will never get out of a Crusader Kings map. is a map that makes any friggin' sense. So, it'll always be, you know, 
Poland, Swiss cheese all over the country, all over the map, I mean, uh, where they have, you know, 70 provinces, but none of them are within three spaces of each other. Like Hungary in the other game. In this game. Excuse me. Hungary was a mess, so I'd have just fixed that. Anyway, um, this program is a wonderful program. Um, unlike Crusader Editor. No offense to the person who made Crusader Editor. I doubt they, they would be watching this since they didn't convert it to Days Vault anyway. Uh, so they obviously don't care that much. Uh, you can sort by different stuff. Uh, the only ones I use are con countries and provinces. Although, when I was messing around with the Holy Roman Empire, because when you convert, nobody's in the Holy Roman Empire. Surprise! Makes it more complicated than it has to be. So you can look at this. As you can see, I made uh, Denmark part of the Holy Roman Empire because they had taken the King of Germany title. So it uh, they deserve to be part of it. I, I actually made them an elector because they were the most powerful. Anyway, um, I sort by countries. Now, this big black mess you see, here is us. Yeah, we're like a blight on the land. And notice how much, how huge we look. Well, this is because that's how huge we are. And uh, we didn't look as huge because of the map um, projection. Now, this is kind of misleading because we don't actually have all that many provinces. Most of the provinces we have are pretty big. Uh, if we go into the province mode, you can see that we have a lot of big, chunky provinces, unlike Europe. Uh, or even uh, the other parts of North, North Africa. See, like, there's five here in this little, in this big space, which is like the entire size of Italy. Um, but yeah, we're huge. Um, we have, I think, 44 provinces. Uh, I don't. Know, I can't think of the top of my head if that's it. Um, but uh, for those who were paying close attention to the Crusader Kings maps, you can tell a few things have changed. Some of these were changes that m were made uh, by the AI in, in, uh, in Crusader Kings. Some of them not so much. Some of them I had to do myself because, uh, well, the Crusader Kings AI is dumb. Um, this right here is the most surprising one. This is the Turks. Um, the Turks basically came out really well. Uh, and uh, they started kicking everyone's ass at the end of the game after I horribly, horribly crippled them. Um, Byzantium's done really well. Uh, Andalusia, <laughs> which is Granada now. Um, they're the southern uh, kingdom. In, they're actually like Muslims in the normal Crusader King start, but, you know, or the normal E3 start. But, uh, you know, I figured, you know, we didn't want to, or a little bastard kid didn't want to be Castile or, or Leon, so they would be Granada, so, uh, yeah, um, we actually have parts of France that Brittany doesn't normally start with, luckily we didn't start with Normandy, uh, I would have been really sad if we started with Normandy, uh, then we wouldn't see all the England-France fighting, a little fight, they always do, um, Germany ended up pretty well, uh, Rome, Rome ended up pretty well, uh, Portugal broke off, or Portugal took it, took it over by Andalusia and then it broke off from Andalusia, uh, towards the very end of the game when I was converting stuff, so I decided to leave it that way. Um, they've still got North Africa, though, for the most part. they still got this part here. They had, Bavaria did the same thing that they did. Uh, Munster, actually, this was actually part of the conversion. Like, Connacht here, uh, th these two provinces, or the uh, equivalent of these two provinces, were both owned by the Papal States, but the Papal States actually uh, didn't get credit for them. You know, Connacht got credit for them. Um, and they got Iceland. Well, they always had Iceland. Um, but, as you can see, the Eastern Europe is less of a mess, and we've got some interesting things happening, which we'll go into in the game. Uh, like here, we pull up this. This, this just kind of shows you how much better the save files are for EU3. You can actually see what things mean, rather than it being written in code. They're not code, but, like, you know. But this is what I'm looking at. Orthodox, yeah. The... Mongols of the Golden Horde are Orthodox, and actually there's quite a few more Orthodox countries. Now you can see, now Crusader Kings ends up like right here, but, uh, or like here. I don't know exactly what the projection is, it's, it's pretty weird. But a lot of countries ended up being Orthodox that would normally be in, in Crusader Kings. I mean, Crusader Kings, when I did the conversion, they ended up being Orthodox when they shouldn't have been based on the Crusader Kings map. I'm fine with that, whatever. Um, like, I think the only major power that was actually 
uh, Orthodox was Byzantium, and I believe like uh, Tver here was also Orthodox. Uh, but it, like Muscovy ended up being Orthodox. Muscovy obviously didn't exist in the three, in a Crusader Kings. Um, this was Finland in uh, in Crusader Kings, and it ended up being uh, Kurland, which is part of Finland. So that makes sense. Um, they're also Orthodox, but like right here is the line between Orthodoxy and and uh, Catholicism. So uh, actually, most of most of the uh, uh, Balkans here, including most of Greece, is, is actually Catholic, so, um, you know, uh, most of the, you know, everything over here is pretty much unchanged, everything over here is unchanged, spoilers, there's America, there'll be a big fog of war there, so we can't see it, but, you know, it's not like we don't already know what's there. I believe since we have this, we'll actually have, uh, visibility on India, because we have the, uh, this coastline. Um, so far as goals go, uh, I'm pretty open to anything. Uh, as you can see, we're pretty well placed for uh, doing any kind of uh, colonial stuff. We can get, we have easy access to India through here. Um, we have easy access to Africa because we are in Africa, <laughs> pretty much. Our capital is in Africa. So yeah, um, to the best province in Africa by far. Uh, and we have a very good, like, almost straight shot to, like, this over here. Uh, so, yeah, um, New World stuff's not out of the picture either. Uh, and I, I still think we need quests for the New World, which, um, which I'm about to show you in a second when I show you a mod, is on our list of preferred, um, things, because I just took the Brittany one, because it didn't make sense to take the, the Mameluke one. Uh... Which was another problem with the conversion. Um, but I always intended to make us a, a, a special country anyway. Uh, a special country meaning a, a custom country. It's basically just copied Brittany with different names. Anyway, let me show you that. Here, no, another one. This, this is the mod folder. In E3. Excuse me. Um, and I created this mod. You just take a text file, write some stuff in here, and you're going to name your mod, and then save it as a mod folder, or a mod file. For some reason they show up as movie clips on my computer, but they're not. Um, these are the files I've been working with. Um, you may have noticed that, uh, I'll show you this, I made a flag for the Breton Empire. And you think it's like, well, this, that's Britain right there, the Breton Empire. No, nope. that was already taken. We are this, EBE. I picked EBE because there's only two other countries in the country code that are E's, so that's why. It looks like that. Uh, if you've seen my my new avatar on YouTube, that's what it is. It's just uh, a normal flag of Brittany I found on Google Image Search, and I slapped the, the uh, Crusader Cross for Egypt from Crusader Kings on it. I think it looks nice. Um, and that'll just that'll be put on your flags and stuff, even the like wavy flags that you put on your guys. It looks cool. Um, but the first thing you do, I'm going to show you how you make your own country, is you make a file like this. Now this file is here so that it doesn't wasn't polluting the, uh, the pool. This actually goes in here. And there's another copy of it in here. But basically I took the Brittany file, which is here, and it's got all your little things for what you start with, and modified them. Like my, my, my capital is not Nantes, my capital is Alexandria. So changed it, and then my monarchs are, I think all these monarchs are still on the list, but I put ours, our current one on the list too. It doesn't really matter, because it's changed by the actual history file in the game, but you need this to actually have a history, uh, to have, have a country. So you can modify these to have little things pop up, like this. This makes it so that, uh, little historical events. I'm not going to put any of those in the game, because our country is not historical. I may put a couple here and there to fit what you know, seems like it's going on in the game. But I'm not going to do anything that makes us cheat or... I might do some things that screw us over. That would be fun and interesting. Maybe. Uh, anyway, we can actually create advisors. We're in the France-Switzerland part. Um, we can actually designate wherever we are in anyway. Um, yeah, and you can look through all these. Uh, you can actually change the name of provinces, which I have done. 
I didn't show it, but I've actually changed a couple of names of provinces. Like this, Joseph Land, which is, uh, I think uh, it's where Baghdad is, yeah, so Iraqi Arab is what it is. And, uh, yeah, I just felt that was, because it's, uh, the, the province in-game is actually converted to Breton and Catholicism, so I just thought I'd change the name, which I said I was going to do. Um, and you'll see that as you, as you go into the game. Uh, pretty much that's just changing files. Uh, I'll save to go to localization. Take text, the most generically named thing in the game. It's just, it shows the, uh, the various, uh, UI things. But if we find... Yeah. EBE, Breton Empire. This sh shows... The, the, the different columns are what they're called in different languages. So if you're uh, an American like me and you only speak English, uh, the only the first line matters. Um, and then the second one, I believe, is French and so on. I don't really know. But, you know, I only care about the first one. Um, so... You could also change various things like that. You get like you got to change uh, the different adjectives that they call you. Like uh, we are called Bretons, just like a uh, normal Brit, normal Britannia, or not Britannia. Britannia is England. Um, normal Brittany. I always wondered about that. You can make a second one if you really wanted to. Uh, where's the other one? Yeah, you can change what your leaders name is, um, like, uh, a noble republic ruler is called a, a prince, feudal monarchy is a king, absolute monarchy is a king, you know, uh, okay, I, I guess this is, this is, this is English, this is French, this is German, and, you know, this is Spanish, those are the only ones I could recognize, <laughs> uh, yeah, None of those matter. Uh, pretty much, we'll probably only end up being kings and emperors. But, you know, we might end up being a, a, a queen. Or, it's definitely possible to become a queen, or maybe even a republic eventually. Um, but I, I don't see me changing any of that. What's the one I was looking for? Uh, we can change what the different things are called. Uh, the event descriptions um, and province names to this. Uh, this is what actually shows up on the map. Okay. Anyway, uh, so you have to change that too when you create a province or, or a country. You can't create a problem. Well, you can create a province if you really wanted to. You like make Atlantis or something. But no. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show um just getting ramped up for uh for eu3 uh, crusader king drags at the end so um i was looking i'm looking forward to e 3 a lot and hope everybody uh hope everybody enjoys it at least as much as they enjoyed crusader kings and if uh if you don't like eu3 then uh well i'm sorry but uh that's the game i'm going to be playing now um i might play a couple other games here and there Let's play. Uh, I'm thinking about doing um, Star Control, uh, the Star Control series, at least two and three, um, just as a little side thing, so I don't get uh, burnt out like I did with Crusader Kings. Uh, I think a few people could have probably have seen that if they watched all my videos. Uh, towards the middle, I kind of got burned out. So, and there was a couple of month-long uh, absences, which was largely largely due to the holidays and burnout. So. I'm done. I'm excited to do this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this is Flying McGuffin saying thanks you all, thanks all for watching, and this is the real end to uh, Let's Play Crusader Kings, and the introduction to Let's Play Europa Universalist 3, and don't expect me to say that every time. I'll probably say you 3. Anyway, bye for now.